Somebody else who was also in Manhattan the day that the, the attack happened uh, was my sister, Mari Bryan, uh, who, of course, has lived in New York now for probably the best part of nearly 30 years. Uh, she's the person I go and visit in Connecticut. Uh, she's on the phone uh, and on the video uh, phone, I think, now. Mari, a very, very good morning. Welcome to the Independent Republic. Hello, good morning. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Tell us... Um, what happened for you? Because you were, of course, working um, in the financial business in New York and you knew an awful lot of people who died, sadly, on that day. You were actually on the phone, I think, to somebody when the plane hit, weren't you? Well, yeah, I mean, it was it was one of those days which was a beautiful blue September morning. Um, I still kind of call it a 9-11 kind of day when it's like a really blue sky. And, yeah. and when we watched the first plane hit, when we were in the trading room and we were kind of wow, it's a really blue sky day. How on earth could that plane have hit the trades of the North Tower without, you know, by accident? It just didn't make any sense. Mm. Um, and we had brokers who were on the 102nd floor of, um, of the North Tower uh, that we had live on a voice box. And they, none of them got out. None of them got out. Um, that was just one of those things that happened that day. And when the second plane hit, um, we watched that live. I mean, I wasn't downtown. Our office was in Midtown, but um, it suddenly was, you didn't know what was going to happen next. We were right next to Grand Central. We were, there were all sorts of stories about how many planes there were that were missing, that were, that didn't have their trackers on before they grounded everything. Um, it was a very scary time to be in Manhattan. It really was. And I remember you and I having a, a very long conversation later that day because I was trying to urge you to get the hell out because I think everyone in the world was concerned that this was just the beginning of something and that was not, the second plane going in was not the end. And we knew uh, about Flight 93 at that point, which was uh, somehow forced to crash into, uh, uh, crash into a field in Pennsylvania. And of course, the fourth plane, which hit the Pentagon. Yeah, and I think when the, uh, when the plane hit the Pentagon was when I got the most scared because it was then like, how many planes are there? Mm. Um, and of course, I'd also just put our parents on a pot to uh, put them in a car that morning to go to JFK to the airport to fly back to London because they'd been with me for a couple of weeks. Right. Um, and I remember you and I talking about like, there was about an hour because they were an American flight when I didn't know whether one of the, whether the plane that they were on was one of those planes. Mm, that's right. And I think it turned out that they, they were just about to take off when the first plane hit the first tower, and which meant that all planes were then grounded. So I don't think they did take off, and I think they ended up staying another night, didn't they? Well, they stayed two nights at JFK because nobody was allowed back into Manhattan. Right. So they actually were on a were on cots in a hotel at JFK because there were so many people who were there. Um, and mommy called me on somebody else's cell phone because mm. in those days everybody didn't have cell phones. Yeah. And she certainly didn't. Um, and they finally got back into Manhattan on the Thursday. And I think you were the one who got them flights back to London on the Saturday because I couldn't get through to American Airlines at all yeah. that week. Mm. Um, and oh, it was, it was, just, it was uh, an unbelievable scene. And what about the streets <laughs> of Manhattan? Because did you stay in your office? Did you leave the office? What did you do? Well, I had to stay in the office because I was kind of management and we had to manage the risk. We had to transfer all our phones. I worked for a Swiss bank at that, at that point and we had to transfer all our phones to Zurich um, so that clients could get in touch and they could, you know, obviously the stock market closed, but, but there were other markets that were open around the world. Um, and I ended up leaving the office probably on that day around two o'clock in the afternoon. Mm. Um, and it was very eerie. The whole of Manhattan was completely silent. And by that time, they'd closed down all the airspace and all that were flying um, were F-16s yeah. above Manhattan. Like the noise of F-16s was very bizarre yeah. and very weird. And I, my apartment at that point um, was on 34th Street, right opposite NYU, uh, the hospital. And when I got to the hospital, they had gurneys laid out outside the hospital. But of course, they never found anybody. I mean, they never no. found anybody. So everybody was waiting. Um, and my view at that point from my balcony, I uh, from my apartment, um, was right downtown. Right. And I, the smoke at that point was going over this uh, over the island into brooklyn i'm sure you remember that yeah. scene yeah um 
The next morning, though, um, it came right up to me. The wind changed. So my apartment was covered in dust the next day. Yeah. Um, and it was this smell of burning electrics and sheetrock and yeah. that kind of thing. It, it was, it was, and that, that was my view for six months. And there were tanks on the street as well at one point, were there? Yeah, there were. There were, um, there were, there were Humvees and uh, National Guard uh, tanks, and and the FDR, which I looked down on, which is the main route down to downtown, mm. um, was full of. Uh, oh, the only sound you heard was sirens. Yeah, and now New York for me is a very different city. Well, it, I, you know, I mean, it, you know, I, once it once once the, the pile was there, and it was that there, there were arc lights above it for months and months and months and months, and and the guys that worked on it did an amazing job of clearing it. It was very emotive for a long time. I mean, I, you know, that you couldn't go downtown for a long time because the, the dust was all over the place and all the way up to Houston Street, mm. and gradually they opened. They opened downtown, and and me and friends used to go down and eat at the restaurants downtown as much as we possibly could because it would help them out. Um, but yes, I mean, I, I walk around New York, and I mean, obviously, the pandemic means I haven't been in New York really that much in the last year and a half either. But um, it, I, there are, yeah, it, it's interesting to walk around and you see mm. people who you know were not there on 9 11. They were still in school. They yeah. were. You know, kids who are working now were not there on 9-11. And it, and it was, um, you know, Annette, who you know well, was was down there as well as Dick Oliver on 9-11. And, and she and I both have very searing memories of that day and that week. Um, I think anybody who was there, you know, I didn't lose as many people as some people did. But um, it was a, it was a, it was a searing experience mm. to terrible. be there. A terrible day. Well, listen, thanks for talking to us, and I'll be talking to you, I'm sure, uh, over the course of the weekend. Um, a great debut on the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. We might get you on for some financial advice at some point soon. She's a lot cleverer than I am, uh, I can tell you that.